Hello, welcome back to Shit Rentals of Melbourne. Uh, today I'm joined with Gabs. Hey, have you ever wanted to live on Smith Street in one of the coolest suburbs on one of the coolest streets in the world? Well, we're about to find out what it's really like. Come check it out. Uh, this video is going to be really long, so I'm going to upload the whole video to YouTube like right now um, but I will also upload the two parts of this video to whatever you're watching this on like right now don't stress I'm not gonna be like like for part two and then just not upload the second part the tenants have been living here since September um, and there's quite a few things wrong with the place um, they made some of their own improvements which is great there's a pretty active mice problem that looks like plumbing there's a massive gas leak that took months to fix so that's great thanks Nelson Alexander also fun fact the oven was sinking through the floor recently had an inspection they've replaced it to a compliance with a compliance switchboard We've got residual current devices. You can tell because they've got these little um, test buttons up the top. So if your place doesn't have that, it's probably illegal. Also, this just generally looks great. So before we get into the rest of this video, the tenants that live at this house are suffering from some pretty extreme health conditions that doctors have attributed to uh, them living in the house. Um, the mold is pretty extreme. I was there for probably an hour and a half and I still got a headache, itchy eyes and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but I am a little bit of a wuss. So I put the doctor's certificates here. Uh, so you know I'm not just making that up. This property is managed by Nelson Alexander Fitzroy um, and they've made a number of assertions as to this property meeting the minimum rental standards in Victoria uh, prior to the tenants moving in, including this signed checklist which I'll include in the video. I wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk about the minimum rental standards and also why they weren't met when the tenants moved into this property. So number one, Nelson and Alexander have stated that there is a functioning deadlock on all external entry doors. This is what the minimum rental standards actually say. They say that the property's external doors must have functioning dead latches or be fitted with locks that can be unlocked with a key from the outside but can be unlocked without one from the inside. So when the tenants moved in, uh, the key had to be used on both sides of the door, so entry and exit, and only one key was provided. So that means there were three tenants in the event of a fire, if one person leaving the house had the key, they'd be locked in there and could die. To be fair to Nelson Alexander, this was remedied. However, they did say at the start of the tenancy that this property met this minimum rental standard and it did not. This one's a bit of a funny one, but Nelson Alexander did say at the start of the tenancy that the rubbish and recycling bins were provided. Uh, they were stolen before the tenants moved in. So uh, when they moved in, the rubbish and recycle bins weren't provided. So that's not correct, is it? They also said that the oven was in good working order. We'll get into that in a sec. It's being fixed now though. Nelson Alexander have said that the property is structurally sound and weatherproof. You'll see a video of the roof and some of the ceilings in a sec, and I guess some of the window frames and just kind of holes throughout the house. So I'll let you be the judge as to whether you think it's structurally sound or weatherproof. So Nelson Alexander ticked yes to this one, even though the date at the time was prior to the 29th of March, 2023. And the switchboard at the time looked like this. So I don't know, do with that information what you will. The minimum rental standards also require a fixed heater in the main living area of the building. Uh, there is no heater in this property. The tenants have sent numerous breach notices to Nelson Alexander during the time of their tenancy and there are still a number of things outstanding. These tenants are still paying the full rent for a property that they can't reasonably be expected to inhabit. This is a bedroom up here. There's no power to it. The whole place looks like it's been painted over like 28 billion times. There's like orange mold kinda everywhere. Also, the ceiling's squishy. The ceiling is squishy and wet. A little bit of brick cancer. Oh my God. Um, I'm not a plumber, but I'm pretty sure this is meant to go somewhere. This is um, the roof of the bathroom. So 
if anyone's wondering why there's probably a leak there. It's probably because of this. Gorgeous blue stone though. As you can see, all the wood's kind of struggling. I'm not an electrician, but if anyone could tell me whether this is like that cotton braided wire, that would be really amazing. I doubt this floor is ever going to get fixed. They did fix the gas leak though, which is great. Although I'm not sure this is meant to be like this. Also check this bad boy out, that's where the rats live. Fun fact, this room smells like absolute shit. And if you've ever wanted to see what a moldy bed looks like on a thermal camera, it looks like this. This is the before. I'm gonna pop my hand on the bed in a sec. Also, I don't know if you can see that, but all that white stuff's fucking mold. Also, I'm pretty sure your ceiling isn't meant to look like it's about to fall in. Great view though. All the sewerage and shit goes down there. So we're in the bathroom. Uh, they have painted over the asbestos flue, which is great, but they did miss some bits. I'll show you the before photos of the bathroom. You're gonna love it. Did you know it's possible for a sink to be this rusty? Molds competing with the paint, which is great. Beautiful. A representative from Nelson Alexander Fitzroy was given the opportunity to respond to the draft video that I sent through. Uh, this is their response. Firstly, thank you for bringing these concerns to my attention, and I can assure you we will be using key parts of this feedback to ensure we hone our processes further to ensure gaps don't occur in our delivery, as some appear to have with this property. As one of Melbourne's largest wholly owned real estate businesses, Nelson Alexander pride ourselves on providing great services to our renters, but we are also welcoming of constructive feedback and will always promote continuous improvement if our service delivery is ever called into question. They've also said, I can acknowledge that the minimum standards checklist was signed off when clearly not all items were met. This is something I will investigate further as it is definitely not consistent with our standard service practices and of course the legislation. So is likely an internal performance management matter. I wish I had visibility of this sooner in order to address the concerns earlier in the lease term. It should also be noted Noted that the tenants did give Nelson Alexander numerous opportunities to address these issues very early on in the lease. They also stated that I have qualified that when maintenance concerns were raised with the property manager for this property that the appropriate maintenance action was taken. As part of the routine inspection in April, concerns were raised with the oven, deadlock and potential mould all were addressed immediately. It should be noted that the tenant submitted maintenance requests in early January for these items uh, and they were fixed in around May. I think this representative's definition of immediately is a bit fast and loose considering that's four months. Also, there's still mould. The representative has also stated that when the suspicion of mould was raised, we immediately actioned one, a mould cleaning company to attend the property to address visible concerns and two, engage the professional services of a company called the Mould Doctor to assess the property and make repair recommendations. The finding from the report from the Mould Doctor are that there is a rising damp concern in the property which from a remedy perspective is significantly different repair to that of mold and it is not regarded as an urgent repair. The owner is aware of the repairs, repair work required and will be in a better position to address this once the property has been vacated. Just on that first point, the mold cleaner arrived on the 27th of April and said, look, this is a structural issue and words to the effect of, this place is fucked, there's nothing I can do, it's a shithole. Also, mold caused by or relating to the building structure is still an urgent repair, even if it is a symptom of rising damp. Finally, the representative has stated that Nelson Alexander has no intention to entertain releasing this property for the owner until all minimum standards are met, which is an interesting point to make considering this text message from the property manager. Yep. That was interesting. Yeah, I think we've been here for almost an hour. Uh, how do you feel? <laughs> I actually think I'm starting to get an idea of what they might be experiencing. Like my nose is runny suddenly, my throat's a bit weird. I don't think I'm coming down with something. I think it's because of those mold riddled walls and ceilings in the bedrooms. I feel dizzy. So I think that, yeah, that checks out. Um, yeah. What should be done? This place looks like a place that should be condemned. Like nobody should be living here. It 
looks like and by all accounts it should be demolished and rebuilt because the living conditions are abysmal. Yep. <laughs> and these tenants need to be compensated and supported to be able to get out of this nightmarish loop that they've found themselves in because right now they can't move out. They don't have any compensation to kind of deal with the fact that they've been living in separate places and they can't fin they can't terminate the rent. It looks like they're just going to put it back up onto the market. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that this kind of thing can't happen. Yeah, they need to get a plumber in. I don't really have much more to add. Yeah, I'm happy um, with that. Let's Thank get you. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so what should you do if your property doesn't meet the minimum rental standards in Victoria? There's a few options you have available and none of them are without risk to you as a tenant. Um, unfortunately, I have heard plenty of stories of uh, landlords or real estate agencies responding to uh, breach notices or requests for repair uh, with eviction notices. So that's pretty horrible. In all cases, usually the first step is to email the property manager or landlord uh, and ask for the repairs to be made. In this case, the tenants have done that and unfortunately after some months are still waiting for certain urgent repairs. If that's happened with you, uh, usually there's a way to escalate that. So uh, if you're struggling with that, please reach out to Tenants Vic or myself or Rahu. They'll explain that escalation process. Usually it means finding someone's boss, sending them an email. So the tenants are obviously looking for a new place and they did send through their requirements. Uh, there's three of them. They're looking for a two bedroom place in like Fitzroy or surrounds area. Uh, their requirements are number one, not moldy. Uh, number two, has a backyard or like a small one maybe and number three meets the minimum rental requirements if you live in a shit rental or you've seen one online or advertised for rent uh, submit it to the shit rental subreddit or like join my discord um, we chat about stuff in there also if you want to support what i do please buy some merch through my link tree i'd really appreciate it and also thanks so much to everyone who's already bought merch Love you long time.